Hi, it's Natasha here. We're only human, and being human, we make mistakes. In fact, mistakes are essential for our personal development. If we can reflect and learn from the lessons they hold, they can help us grow, change, and become stronger and wiser individuals. When at university though, there are some mistakes that can and should be avoided, especially when it comes to getting on side with your lecturers and making sure you get the most out of your course. While they may seem obvious, in this video, we'll be looking at the three big mistakes students make and why it's so important to avoid them. On the surface, a couple of them may not seem that big a deal, but we're going to dig a bit deeper so we can really understand their implications. At least that way, you can then make an informed choice on what you do and what you don't. So, the first mistake is missing lectures. While not always compulsory, they're a necessary part of university, even those at 9am after a big night out. A lot of students think they can miss the odd lecture here and there and still do okay. In fact, on average, students don't attend 9% of timetable lessons. But missing lectures is a big mistake for several reasons. They're a very efficient way to learn as you typically receive information that's already been digested and framed for you. And when you miss a lecture, you're not finding out about the arguments and theories you need to go away and study and you won't know what you need to be looking at for further investigation. This could lead to you falling behind or wasting time going off on useless tangents and not doing the work that's expected. You may also feel a bit lost if you show up to discuss things with your course mates and aren't on the same level. And when you get to the next lecture, you might find you're struggling to keep up with what's being discussed. Your lecturers will also expect you to turn up not only to help you get your degree, but also as a matter of respect for their time and effort. If you're regularly missing lectures, it will be noticed and could backfire when you need support. He or she will want to help you, but are going to be less receptive if you haven't made the effort to turn up. For example, if you go to them saying you don't understand a topic and they see you've missed a lot of lessons on that subject, they may suggest you go back and look over your notes instead of giving you one-on-one -on -one support. They'll also have your attendance in mind when marking and will be suspicious if a student does well with low attendance. Another thing is that you're throwing your money away with every lecture you miss. Depending on how long each term is and how many contact hours you have a week, you could be paying anything from £12 up to £50 an hour. Add it up over the course of a year and you could be throwing hundreds of pounds away. You're paying a lot of money for your education, so it's essential to make the most out of your lectures. Everyone is prone to missing the odd lecture here and there. Maybe you haven't done the work, are having trouble understanding the subject, or maybe you just can't get out of bed in the morning. The problem is when missing lectures turns into a pattern. Hopefully realising just how much this could affect your grade will be motivation to change things. For example, if you're really struggling to wake up to get to that 9am lecture, a tactic that used to save me was to set two alarms. It's all too easy to hit the snooze button when you only have one, and I used to put a second alarm on the opposite side of my room so I had to physically get out of bed to switch it off. I recommend a small travel alarm to do the job. So the second mistake students make is not putting in the effort that's expected. Your lecturers and tutors will have certain expectations of you, and if these aren't met, and you're not seen to be trying, you are at risk of failing that module. If they assign a piece of reading, they'll expect you to do it, ready for the next lecture. If it's not being discussed in the next lecture, it could be in a quiz, exam or essay. When they set an assignment, they'll expect you to do it and submit it on time. If you're having trouble understanding a difficult concept or need some guidance on structure, They'll expect you to email or speak to them in office hours well before the handing date. Think of it as a courtesy to them, but you'll also be doing yourself a big favour. Your lecturers will also expect you to take appropriate notes, learn the most effective ways of studying, and know how to complete assignments to a degree standard. Make sure you ask for an assessment rubric, so you know how the marks are given out and what's expected in each assessment. Your lecturers will also expect you to develop a study technique that works for you. And if you're struggling with learning, they'll expect you to ask for help. 
As I've mentioned in other videos, asking for help can be a bit daunting, but it's important to remember that as part of their job, lecturers are there to support you and would rather you ask for help than suffer in silence and have your grade affected as a result. Studying at university means taking responsibility and really making an effort to achieve your academic potential. As with anything in life, what you put into it will determine what you get out of it. You made a choice to do a degree, which is really great. Focus on your goals, remember why you started university and what you wanted to achieve by being here. It is a massive commitment and will mean making changes to who you are and how you work. And admittedly, this can be hard, but it's a really positive thing. Not putting in the effort could lead to retaking a module or even a year, not to mention impacting your relationships with your lecturers and tutors. I'm sure that is the last thing you want to happen. So the third massive mistake is plagiarism. The majority of students are honest, but cheating does happen. And the consequences of this can be greater than just being disciplined. Not only could you be expelled or have marks deducted, which will affect your final grade, but it's an insult to you, your lecturer, and everyone supporting you. Don't do it. There's no justification for it. You made it to university because you're capable and competent, and it's important you don't do something you'll end up regretting. Actions have consequences, and the consequences for cheating are severe. So, these mistakes are obvious, but they're easy to make, especially when caught up with the stresses and challenges of university and being a student, not including everything else that goes on in your personal life. If this video has gotten you thinking about where you need to change, I urge you to do so. To start, think about the one thing you can do differently, which will have the biggest impact on your course and your work, and make a pact with yourself to work on that. I mean, really make a concerted effort to change and don't give up. You won't regret it. Positive development will mean you keep a good relationship with your lecturers, you'll be developing good habits for when you start work, and you'll get the grades you deserve. Good luck with it, keep the positive outcomes in mind, and I'll see you next time.